We're back with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, time for us to go through the papers. We call it Off the Press. Jide Johnson joins us this morning. Jide, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Mercy, and good morning, Kofi. May the Lord have mercy on us in Nigeria in terms of our responses to, to, to emergency situation. Amen. Amen. I think we can say amen to that. Okay. Amen. So, um, we'll start off with the Punch newspaper. Lagos train bus crash. NRC, last month, blamed driver as federal government orders probe. Bus driver reckless ignored safety warning by railway staff. Uh, that's according to officials. Six killed. Families donate blood as 29 critically injured battle for survival. Lagos suspends political campaigns. Buhari Sunubu Atiku orders mourn. Okay. INEC falls judgment permitting temporary voters card for polls. And you also find court bar CEO from running uh, the samplet. Again, NCAA probes Lucero over alleged passengers uh, maltreatment. And just before we move away from that, uh, you find victims tackle lawless soldier over extortion and harassment. That's on the punch this morning. The Nation newspaper has the following headlines. Survivors recount moment train slammed into bus. Survivors recount moment train slammed into bus. Six die, 29 critically injured, 50 suffer injuries. Buhari Tinubu sympathize. Samolu visits injured in hospital Lagos accident. Distressing, says Buhari. More from the nation, the window caption. First one there, INEC rejects court ruling on temporary voter cards used. They put out a press release or put out a statement on Twitter last night, four minutes past 9 p.m., uh, saying they'll go to court uh, regarding that, um, that uh, Federal High Court in Abuja uh, uh, ruling. APC uncovers plot by fake Nadeko chief to discredit Poe. Uh, 25 killed in Badagri, Enugu, Ogbomosho Road crashes. APC, LP, NNPP differ on shift of governorship poll. Federal government cautions doctors against joining strikes. APC, NWC member dies. Wiki will chase away Atiku others. Rebuild party. I think yesterday he said he would chase away those who caused his party to lose the presidential election. Uh, what a paradox or an irony. Those are some of the headlines on the front page of The Nation. Now we have uh, The Guardian to look at. Poll shifts may cost Nigeria more than $2.23 billion. Uh, I take that again. Poll shift may cost Nigeria more than $2.23 billion uh, suffered in 2019. you find several riders will just take one or two. Postponement compounds Naira and fuel crisis woes. That's according to the SBM. Why Buhari is quiet over the allegations of irregularities against INEC. March 18 poll, excuses no longer acceptable. IPAC cautions INEC, and uh, INEC has eroded our confidence. Then you find protect our integrity and the integrity of data from Beavers. APC tells INEC. Uh, INEC kicks us court orders commission to allow Nigerians vote without PVCs. I mean, really, why are we? being progressive or not. Despite reported positive trend, palm oil industry still struggles. And most times, a lot of people say, well, this might just be victories that we're recording on paper. 21 die in road crashes in Lagos, Inugu. And then you find uh, plot training or pilot training fee hits 20 million naira as NCA, IAC increases tuition fee. Uh, government elections, lessons of postponement, sounds like an editorial. That's it on The Guardian. The last paper on the table this morning is uh, Leadership Friday. Uh, some interesting headlines there, but we start with uh, the big one. Polls postponement. Governors re-strategize woo voters with jobs, promotions. Indeed, uh, we've seen some of it here in Lagos State. Riders um, to that tough race is expected in Lagos. Delta, Kano, Kaduna, Gombe, Nasarawa, Ketsina. We respect INEX decision to postpone polls, APC. And uh, we see a picture of that uh, ill-fated uh, BRT bus, uh, staff bus there, uh, and the train. Really sad one. It says, um, 
okay, six die in Lagos Street accident in Sonolu, declares three days of mourning. A uh, woman jailed 24 years for 298,000, uh, 48 million Naira property for That's a long time. Uh, troops arrest, arrest 35 terrorists, killed 21. Crisis in IPOB camp. Kanu seeks to replace senior lawyer. And uh, Bajabia Miller tops list of contenders for Chinua's chief of staff. So it means that he may uh, say goodbye to the people of Surulere, the good people of Surulere, federal constituency. Um, let's start with you, uh, uh, Jay Johnson, good morning once again. Let's start with uh, uh, your thoughts on yesterday's um, very sad incident at the PWD uh, junction right there in Ikeja, uh, Lagos State. Very unfortunate one. Um, so far, six people, dead toll, four died in the hospital. Two dead people were brought from the scene, and uh, overall, 122 casualties uh, attended to in the hospital. Uh, God will grant the family of those that lost their loved ones and their breadwinners the fortitude to bear the loss. I will pray for speedy recovery for those that are suffering from one injury or the other. However, these are avoidable incidents. This is just um, an avoidable incident, just compliance with, with basic regulation that governs um, road and rail transport will have prevented will have prevented this. Now, I saw one of the end line which the Nigerian Railway Corporation and then the Lagos State Emergency Response Authority said that we are blaming the driver. It puts to question the kind of people that are that 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 are recruited to be driving these buses. How often do they train them with respect to road safety? If you drive on the road, you know that these people driving these blue buses have no respect for other road users. In actual sense, they have no respect. They don't they don't mind pushing you into 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 the into the into the drainage system along the road and they, they, they operate like the road masters because they feel they are protected. And I'm sure if you look at this particular incident, I'm not too sure if the driver is affected by this by by, 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 by this by this by this unfortunate unfortunate avoidable avoidable incident. Then that's on the part of the driver. Also Another thing which we need to look at is our emergency response um, situation. Instead of some people coming to the aid of the people, there is the need to teach and to educate Nigerians what it means to be a first responder. In the sense that some are busy taking, they are busy taking pictures, taking videos, recording the incident, other than coming to the rescue of those that, that, that were involved. That's on the part of the citizenry. Educating Nigerians to be first responders, other than to be by watchers or standby, when such incidents happen. The other one is our medical facilities in terms of how we respond to emergency and the rest and the rest of it. We saw, um, uh, I'm not verified, that we saw pictures of people being laid on, on, on bed floor in the hospital and where there are no hospital beds and the rest of it for, for them. That need to be looked into whoever wins the election um, across the state, not even limited to legal state alone. There's a need for us to look at how we respond to emergency. How do we treat people that have emergency situation? Situation from crashes like this, situation from accidents. We need to we need we need to respond as quickly as possible, dealing with this partic this particular issue. Quickly, not waiting for some protocols or some some registration process. If you have taken somebody to the hospital, particularly public hospital in Nigeria. You understand what I'm talking about in terms of how you are treated, in terms of how they responded to you, in terms of the number of hours it will take for them to really deal with the particular issue which you have brought to the hospital in case of emergency. An emergency is an emergency. The first step you do in an emergency is to save, is to save life, save all, all, all the protocol, deal with the issue, and then you come and deal with the protocol much more later. But in our own case, the emphasis is more on the protocol other than administering um, Medicare to, to see people from losing from losing their lives. It's unfortunate, but we continue to talk, and hopefully we believe they will hear us one day and do the needful. All right. Um, looking at the punch now, INEC Falls judgment permitting temporary voter card for polls. Judy, uh, how, how does this make you feel? There is an arrogance with this present INEC chairman, which I don't like. INEC is, an, is, is a creation of the state. It's a product of the Constitution. And the judiciary is a core component part of the Constitution to adjudicate on matters 
of the state, either between the individual and individual and individual, individual and the state, and the state and the federal government, or the local government, the state and the federal government. So the judiciary is the final arbiter, is the, is the body that is charged with interpreting. So INEC does not have an authority that supersedes that of what judiciary decision, whatever decision they take. If the judiciary decides, okay, in the interest, in the in the interest of the public, you need to do this, you need to do this, in order for you to enhance and entrust public confidence in the process. You need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that. So they should understand that whatever pronouncement is made by the court, they are duty bound to comply with such pronouncement. And if you feel dissatisfied with that, you can approach a higher court until it gets to the Supreme Court. But you don't try to discredit the judicial system because you want to show that you have an authority or you have a larger than life um, 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 image than what the Constitution permits you to have. We have seen that that some institutions, institutions like NNPC, institutions like INEC, institutions like CBN, behaving as if they are not product of the creation of, of this of, of of the constitution. They are not subjected to 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 the to the to the extant laws, process and procedure that govern this nation. And there's the need for us to 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 to, 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 to stop this. And I think the courts need to be bold enough to try some people for contempt of courts, for people for contempt of courts and for death to be taken to be taken to jail. Because once if you don't have respect for the judiciary, <coughs> you don't have respect for the legislature, then we don't have a state. Then we don't have a nation. And that's that's just that's just that's just my, my, my own challenge with this entire entire process. Okay, Jilly Johnson. Are there yeah, to yeah. Jilly Johnson, yesterday the <clears throat> the uh, Electoral um, Commission put out a statement saying they're going to challenge this in court. Um, and th there were three prayers. The third prayer by these two Nigerians who went to enforce their rights in court was that other Nigerians, elig eligible voters uh, who do not have a PVC but have the temporary voter card, the TVC, should be allowed to vote on Saturday. Uh, but the judge, uh, Justice Obiara, re refused to grant that, declined. Uh, granting that prayer, saying that the case was not, um, uh, they, they didn't come in a representative capacity to be able to um, say, oh, please give us a judgment that will favor all of Nigerians. So, so um, but one wonders why INEC would go to court to challenge uh, this when you have only two persons who are involved, only two, because the legal fees and everything involved um, uh, will be much. You know, one wonders that. Um, that's, so secondly, do you think that it's possible for uh, maybe a human interest organization, uh, NGO, a group of Nigerians to approach the court again between now and before the elections to to file a case that will be representative of all voters who don't have a PVC uh, but are registered and captured in the database. Do you think it's necessary to to to, to do that before uh, Saturday? Okay. Yeah. What is required is that is that data captured on the database. Is that data captured? I think we took their thumbprint and we took all other vital data in order for us to register them to participate in the process. If their data is captured, why? Permanent, temporary. The, those are qualifying words, permanent, and then temporary voters. So the most important thing is that they are voters and they are captured. Okay. If they are registered <coughs> voter, whether they have the permanent card, or temporary card, they should be allowed to vote as long as they are captured. They are captured in the database of INEC. INEC had said, Jide Johnson, that that the law does not allow them to to um, to to use to 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 accept people if you don't have your your, your card. You must count your card to be accepted. And indeed, remember there was a rumor a night to the presidential election of 25th February that INEC was going to allow anyone who had. Um, uh, the data captured and you know wasn't registered to vote, and they came out to debunk that, saying no PVC, no voting. You know, so in fact, if um, you're caught, you have seen on the road by a police officer, and you can't show me PVC, you may be arrested for 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 wandering and loitering. You know, and um, but what the judge said me. was that what the judge said was that the section 47 subsection one said voters card, but they didn't specify was PVC or TVC. So in his opinion, in his wisdom, uh, that. Even the TVC is a voter's card. Kofi, that's why I said it's an adjective. Permanent, 
uh, temporary. Those are adjectives. The law does not recognize adjectives. Now, Kofi, if you, if you have your PVC and then you are not able to be accredited either through your term or your image at three attempts, what happened? Will you be able to vote? No, nope. no, nope. no, no, even with the permanent voter's card in your hand and you are not able to successfully be accredited either through your thumbprint or your image at the turn that attempt, you are prevented from voting. The most important element is for your data to be captured. Are you a registered voter? If you are a registered voter, as long as you have you are provided money for various forms of technology, they brought in the bimodal accreditation system. So if you the image of the person is captured and it is really image, whether with the card or no card, he should be able to vote. He should. As long as you are a registered voter. Now, Kofi, should I tell you, has that voter's list been clean? Has it been clean? Have they removed the names of those that are dead since 2019 to date mm. from, the voters, from the voters' list? I can tell you for a fact. My number on the voters' list is 26. The one of my late wife is 25. Her name is still on the voters' list. I showed my son. I said, see your mom. She's still on the voters' list. And then she died in 2019. So, the, this, 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 this drama, you know, we love this drama in this part of the world. This, this protocol, this sticking to rules, principles, and what have you, that I'm, the most important thing is for you to be a registered voter. If you're a registered voter, the only way we know, even if you come with your permanent voter's card, is that we check your thumbprint, whether it matches what we have in the in the in the machine or we use your image if it is there we allow you to vote even if you have permanent voters card and we can't capture you we can't recognize your thumbprint you will not vote why do we make drama out of it all of the guidelines that i said they were going to follow they didn't even follow their guideline okay they but didn't go to court Jide, let's also look at um, another issue as regards the uh, postponement of the election. You have some quarters uh, or some persons who are saying, uh, if you look at the cost of this postponement, would rather have the elections uh, because of the huge implication. Referencing what happened, you know, in 2019, where we spent about uh, 2.23 billion naira, if I'm not mistaken, dollars. I beg your pardon. We know that a lot of activity, a lot of activity have been suspended because of this election. One school have been closed. All cash institutions have been closed. Two, a lot of businesses are, are, are been closed. Three, you know the impact of rendering us, you know how many people that have scheduled to do something on the 18th that have to move, on the 11th that have to move it from 11 to 18, and those that have rescheduled their event from the 18th, now that has been taken over by a national election. So basically, there will be a cost implication, but who bears the brunt of the cost is the ordinary people. Because what is the explanation or justification for the postponement of the election? I never knew more than four years ago, even let's say four years ago, that they were going to have an election at a certain date. They chose the date, they chose the time. And now they are postponing the election. I recall the drama. When Jonathan postponed the election in 2015, for six weeks, I recall the drama that attended that postponement. In fact, it took the National Council of State as to give an approval to the postponement of that election. Today, two days ago, the INEC chairman woke up and postponed the election without involving critical stakeholders in the postponement. The National Executive Council, the National Council of State were not involved. Elections are a critical component of democratic society. Nobody have access to power in a democratic governance except through the poll through, through, through the polls. You can only assess public authority, public power in democracy through the poll. Now you have an agency of government that is charged with that responsibility, just toying toying with, with Nigerians with respect to the management. But, but Gina Johnson, you also un understand that I mean uh, would you rather consider them going ahead to conduct the election with all of the um, you know glitches and some of the things that they have mentioned, the issue of reconfiguring the beavers, which requires you know uh, not just a day, according to INEC here now, and uh, also uh, the issue of logistics. So, 
should we rather go ahead with the excesses uh, that we have in conducting the elections or uh, just uh, decide to do it the right way? So if IMEC told us in preparation to this election that they are fully prepared in case there is a runoff for the presidential election, they told us. That means that they were prepared for at least three elections. The one, the two at the national, and probably one at the state level. Now, if you see, the problem with INEC is just transparency. It's about not coming out clean with Nigeria. It's not about stating, stating the obvious on the onset. The issue of the configuration of the Beavers machine, what we told earlier, what we told, that after every election, the machines, the by, by modern machines, will be, will be reconfigured. You see? And they keep introducing new rules, new guidelines into the process. And that's the challenge a lot of people have with it. As far as elections are concerned, it's about transparency. It's about coming clean. It's about telling Nigerians what you intend to do. If I think I told us that at the end of every election, we will configure the, the, the bimodal voters accreditation system, the machine using for it, would Nigerians will be aware of it. They will not suspect any foul play. But a situation whereby people are suspicious of your actions because of your lack of compliance with your own well-written guideline, you begin to build lack of confidence, public confidence in what you are doing. And that's why they are running from pillar to post, running from one court to the other. There shouldn't be any even court cases with respect to the conduct of election. Because if you stick with the timetable, if you stick with the guideline, if you stick with the enabling law that governs your election, there are, there are super laws that cannot be challenged by anybody. But we have a situation whereby I think we see one thing today, we will see another thing tomorrow. That's why they are running from pillar to post. Jine, we're out of time. We'll just quickly take your, your, your thoughts on this, just in one minute, please. Uh, the bottom of the front page of The Guardian, one week after Supreme Court ruling, CBN silence stokes confusion. Very quickly, please. You know, I started on the note that there are some institutions that believe that they are bigger than the Nigerian state, NNPC, CBN, and INEC. And I said that the courts need to be bold. In this case, for contempt of court, ACB, um, CBN should have released a statement. It, the, the Supreme Court needs to charge the central bank governor for contempt. They need to charge him for contempt. If they don't get him under this administration, if this administration is giving him protection, at least sooner than later, he will soon become a private citizen. Because there was no statement released to that effect. And the banks are issuing the old note. The people are not collecting the old note because they don't have confidence in it. There's no statement from government, either federal government, either the presidency or central bank. So it was just, they were just silent about it. And the banks are issuing new, they were issuing old notes that people are not collecting, that even some banks themselves are not collecting. All right. Uh, Jide Johnson, uh, Senior Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of, Just of Journal Journalism. Uh, I won't say justice, because you did justice to all the topics expertly. Uh, we thank you for your time. And uh, we we'll look forward to having you next week uh, as we count down to the governorship election. Hopefully, there will be no further postponement. Let me do this, and we will yeah, we'll be done with it. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy your weekend. May 29th. May, May 29th. May 29th. So close. Why do we need to bring the election so close to the election? Why couldn't we have had this election in December or in January? Jiri, so thank you very much for your time. To this election will have been completed. And uh, <laughs> have to regards, regards to your family. Appreciate the time. All right. Very energetic uh, delivery analysis by Jiri Johnson, as always. It's a thrill having you. We have more discussions ahead. Mercy. And when we return, we'll be looking at the issue of the postponement of the uh, elections that are slated to have happened uh, on Saturday. That would have been the 11th of March uh, 2023 to uh, March uh, 18, 2023. We'll talk some more when we return. Please stay with us.